And we are live. Welcome back to On the King's Dime. It is Tuesday night. We have a bumper show. There's a there's a blank screen above me. I've got Andy. He's just popped off for a second. He'll be back. Um, we've got another bumper show again tonight. The final round of the season. Absolute chaos is about to ensue. Um, so we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about you know where we can finish, where the rest of the league might fall. There's plenty to happen over the next, you know, what is it, eight days or seven days or so, um, all the way all the way through. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about the Perth loss. That was a, a bit of a struggler. Yet again, another game week, another 1-1 game week, yet another 1-1 game week, another 1-1 game week. Um, you know, we, we've had far too many this season, and it's been one of the, the huge issues with why we're currently sitting in this spot where we're struggling to make the playoffs. Essentially, we should have had it cemented but a lot of these 1-1 one, one game weeks have been happening. Uh, and then we'll talk about the Melbourne, like one of the crazy, crazier games that we've seen in the last couple of years against Melbourne, an overtime thriller. We'll talk about that game for in the Indigenous round. That, that was great to see as well. There's a lot of good stuff happening uh, for the Indigenous round, not just the jerseys, but the celebrations and uh, everything that went along with it in the stadium. That was great to see. Uh, but always, as always, you can like and subscribe. We're currently live on Facebook Right now, we stream these every week on Facebook, the podcast. Uh, and if you want to listen to us in audio form, we're on the Anchor platform. So that goes out to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. So make sure you check us out on the King's Dime. Uh, and then give us a rating and review too. That'll help us get out there to more listeners, get us to more ears of King's fans. Um, it's been a, been a very, very long and taxing season. There's been a lot of injuries there's been a lot happening, you know, a lot of roster upheaval, coach upheaval. We've had people uh, in and out with injury. We've had signings. We've had guys come in and really give us a boost, you know, and then we've also had guys come in and kind of not really do that much. It's definitely always a tough game when you've got to really kind of retool the roster on the fly during the season. Um, and then we had the unfortunate news of Coach Forty. Basically, he's not going to re-sign. There's been a lot of speculation over why i think his original statement was essentially you know family reasons he didn't want to be away from his family you know we can speculate and sort of say that that might have something to do with um the longevity of his deal maybe there's something to do with that or possibly you know proximity to his own family being back in perth um there's there's also possibilities that trevor gleason might move on and there's a, he's in the running for for a perth job and then we saw today with mike kelly um he actually wasn't re-signed by the Taipans. He won't be coming back next season. So, you know, there's there was another rumor that he's going to Cairns. I thought that was a bit of a strange one after all that he said. I, I feel like he's quite a genuine guy. We'll actually talk more about this at the end. I'll get Andy's opinion. Um, but I thought, you know, that's kind of a weird one. You know, I, I would not expect Forty to kind of go. You know, family reasons. I, I, I'm out. And then, oh, I'm going to I'm going to Cairns. He's like, see you later. I'm taking my family there. I thought, you know, Sydney and Cairns, you know, Sydney's probably a better opportunity. Um, you might want to kind of um, keep your family moved or get your family moved in and, you know, coach Sydney rather than the Cairns Taipans. But, you know, it is what it is. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out because, you know, losing him or him making the announcement with, you know, a good sort of seven, eight games left in the season – you know, it can go both ways. We we had talked about that going. It could go both ways. We saw the the Gays um, situation a couple of seasons ago. It's it's hard to kind of compare him back to Gays, but that situation a couple of years ago where he you know win one for the Gipper, I'm out at the end of this season. You know, and the team kind of capitulated and was just like, yeah, we're good. See you later. We we didn't want to play for you anyway. You know, there was that sort of thing happening. So it's. It's definitely been a taxing season. There's a lot to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about the two games too. The Perth game was just another game where we, you know, and just this season you cop, oh, just lose a game. And then you, you can look back. I was looking back through some of the results at, you know, just how many times we've just lost games and you're just like, that was a winnable game. Oh, that was a pretty winnable game. Why did we lose that game? Oh, that, you know, we should have won that game. I, I really think, this team not at the level of a Perth and a Melbourne. And that's that's genuine, that's legit. You know, I can happily sit here and say on the course of this season that, you know, it's not necessarily a disappointment, but we kind of are where we are as a team. You know, we've faced the adversity, we've come through some of it, you know, we've struggled through some of it. 
Um, but we've also, also come up against, you know, insurmountable odds and lost games where, you know, g- genuinely you're left sitting there going, yeah, well, we, we aren't really that good a team. So you, you kind of got to accept that. Um, against the top teams, you know, we've given a decent account of ourselves, a couple of quite good Melbourne wins. Um, really, really interesting to see that if we go into a finals, we're, we're going to talk about the uh, playoff picture. I'm just kind of rambling along, waiting for Andy, <laughs> Andy to come back. Um, I was running out of time on the the music, um, so I basically had to go live anyway. The splash splash music only the green room only has so long on the music, um, so I had to to sort of come 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 live and start talking. Um, but you know, going going into a playoff series, possibly against Melbourne, would be very interesting. I think we we've, we've won against them twice. Going up against Perth, you, you would think Perth are playing tonight, um, and they're currently leading at the moment. Oh, it's a it's a tight game. I think it's a one point game with a couple of minutes to go. You'll be thinking Perth will be sitting there going, "Yes, give us Sydney. Like we want Sydney definitely. We'll definitely play them in the first round. They've had the wood over us. We haven't been able to beat them in something like eight or nine games. They don't have cotton. You know, they they handled us. You know, you would say they kind of handled us in that game the other night. Oh, Harvey just hits a three, crazy. Um, you would say they handled this the other night, and I would, if I was them, I'd be looking to win this game tonight against the Hawks and go like, "Good, we're giving Sydney as much chance as we can to get a two-three kind of matchup, and then just handle us in the finals." I think you know that's probably their preferred option uh, on that front. But if you look at what's happening, there's there's three teams basically that finished nineteen and seventeen, and it's just absolute chaos. I didn't actually realize Southeast Melbourne and Brisbane play twice. So there's a real chance with Brisbane playing three that if they get three wins here, one obviously is against us. Damn, there's some massive shots being hit at the end of this game. Three threes in a row, Harvey and then Wagstaff and then Harvey again. Um, With those guys playing twice, that actually throws a huge spanner into the works because we basically got to beat Illawarra and beat Brisbane and it kind of puts it in our hands. Like if if we beat Brisbane, that kind of ends their chances of finishing uh, in the finals. Um, but at the same time, with Southeast Melbourne playing three times, they have a huge chance to kind of just win two and that's it. If Illawarra win tonight, uh, that's it. For pretty much for us, we can't finish third if they, you know, if they finish on twenty wins and then Southeast Melbourne can, you know, win two games and so and lock themselves in. So essentially all we can do is win two games. That's gonna be huge, and then hope that we can get uh that we can get through and um yeah, here he is. He's back. Um, the, the, splash, the splash music was going to run out. So I was just like, oh, just go live and start talking. So I've just been rambling about how we can possibly finish in the top three this season, uh, at the end of this season. And just the chaos is going to happen. Because um, at the moment, 79-77, Perth, Illawarra. Um, Illawarra have the ball, Mike. And then they've just, Harvey's just hit two threes in a row. Like, this is crazy, this game. Um. I did make a prediction that it would come down to the final, the final game. I didn't think we were cemented in. I think it was always going to be a bit of a roller coaster, of some good and bad. But um, it's a bit of the unlikely heroes of late in terms of you know putting together this week. Um, obviously not the Perth game, but um, definitely the the Melbourne game, the uh, unsung heroes. Mind you, that Melbourne game was an absolute chuck fest. It was it was a weird weird game. We'll get to that, but we, I just want to quickly talk about this this week. Um, I kind of was was just sort of started. I let off with it. Um, the Hawks are currently sitting nineteen and fifteen. If they win this game tonight against Perth, they basically lock themselves in. We can't get to twenty wins. Brisbane can't get to twenty wins. Um, we're in the fate of the gods with Southeast Melbourne, who are eighteen and fifteen. Um, we're, but they play three times, so essentially they've got three chances here to win twice, cement themselves in that fourth spot. Sydney currently 17 and 17, and then Brisbane 16 and 17. Basically, Brisbane have to win all three and hope that they get, <laughs> hope that they can somehow burgle, you know, a winning percentage or a um a points percentage and get through. Um, and then for us, we have to essentially win two games and then hope that Illawarra lose and Southeast Melbourne lose. Well, I tell you what, Brisbane. If Brisbane beat Southeast Melbourne twice, we're in mm. because they play twice. That will that will that will give us a huge advantage. But I think. You know that that we're we're in our own hands. We've got to win both games to have a real chance. I don't think we're going to do it if we win one. Um, I just don't think it's possible with you know, Southeast Melbourne playing three times. I do think they'll at least pull <coughs> one game out of the hat. 
But uh, yeah, it's um, it's not a great position to leave ourselves in. But uh, with the injury runs that we've had, Xavier Cook's being wonderful in about eleven minutes a game. Yeah, um, he's looked so good. I wanted to talk about that during the like when we talk about the Melbourne game. But how good has he looked? Just you're just like, damn, we've just missed that all season. Like another I, long defender. I think I texted you. Just he's got a bit of you know a bit of um, JT in him. Yeah, Sean Tate, where he can bring defenders out and then blow by them, spin and score around the rim. Just like he's got, to- he's got like a sneaky knows how to use his length, like yes. in the paint. Like he's got the euro. He had one where basically on the catch went really like long euro, like not even like sidestep euro. It was like really long three steps and then laid it in and it was like damn. He like stepped through all those defenders and it was kind of it just made you go wow like. Hunter doesn't have that in his game. Kickett doesn't have that in his game. Tommy V has kind of, you know, just base um, base level moves around the rim. And it really is something we missed. Yes. Jarrell doesn't really have that either. He doesn't have like, oh, a catch, step through um, and score. It looks like Illawarra is basically going to win this game. So that that pretty much just changes every, changes the entire <laughs> round, changes his entire podcast. We're basically got to win these games and hope Southeast Melbourne lose twice. Um, to play Melbourne. So I was sort of saying, who would you prefer to play, Perth or Melbourne, if we Melbourne. did make the playoffs? Melbourne, Melbourne. I the- think we've got a little bit against Melbourne. I think you're just not going to win a home series in Perth. I think that's that's guaranteed. Sydney, and it's not even that. I think the refing is just atrocious. And Sydney will just get refed off the floor. It's out of control. We'll, we'll talk about that in this game. Because essentially we could do another video, basically, just on this game alone. Because there were so many bad calls in that game. But we'll get to that. But I think Melbourne, like, they're kind of beatable. Like, these, these games we played against them, we're just like, mm, you're kind of beatable a little bit. Yeah. Land, yeah Landau yeah. kind of gets into this funk of, like, nothing's coming off. And, like, it's, it's nothing's coming easy. And then instead of kind of just going back to basics, like, you watch Mooney. And Mooney, if nothing's coming off for him, he just goes back to basics. Gets a jumper, gets a bucket. They move the ball around. He gets an easy bucket and gets himself going again. And he's just like, damn. Whereas Landau like gets a bit like handsy, shoving dudes, gets upset, staunches up a little bit. He's like, mm, I can get in your head a little bit here. I think that <laughs> yeah, he is he's kind of missing he's missing like that he's a power forward, and I think that's the that's the the real crux of it, is that he's playing the five position when typically he's he's a power forward. He's like a stretch four who can who can do a little bit of rim defending. But he doesn't have a real good, you know, drop stead fake art arsenal. He, his mid range is not great, so he's either mm. really got to score around the bucket or hope he's getting, you know, his threes are going down. And you're right, he does get a bit shitty and a bit moody when he doesn't, when it, nothing goes his way. It's it's yeah. all kind of um, like he's got no power game. Like it's all craft over the shoulder, left right, you know, yeah. sort of scoops and flicks rather than you know being able to bump and power through finishing guy against guys. It was interesting that Cairns game, him trying to defend Jarwai. <laughs> Although <laughs> though Jarwai doesn't really have the silky touch of some of the better bigs that we've ever seen in general, it was still awesome to see him just bumping off, bumping dudes off <laughs> in that Melbourne Jarwai's game. Jarwai's just an absolute monster. And it's always fascinating. Even just, um, you know, sometimes it feels a bit like the meme. Like you're just like, yeah, he's, you know, 140 and it's mad to see a guy who's 140 like bumping into dudes. Some, but sometimes it's actually good to see you know, from a fundamental standpoint, how guys go up against him. Mm-hmm. He's just like, if you can kind of find a way, like not even um, not even shut him down or, you know, play solid defense on him. If you, if you have the craft as a big man to kind of, oh, I'll, I'll, you know, use my body in a different way, not get sapped by bumping him the entire time. I, I find that quite interesting. And I thought in this Melbourne game yesterday that they played behind closed doors at Kudos. That was a little bit Lando was just like <laughs> charging around like, oh, I'm just going <laughs> to... And it was like a, ooh, a bit eye-opening. Like, you know, you couldn't really find a way to kind of get around that. So just to tie it all the way back into possibly Sydney making the finals, man, it'd be interesting Hunter going up against him again because I think they've he's kind of had the had a little bit of a wood on this Landau, Landau sort of Luau Lachul combination. We kind of got the girth to uh, go up against those two dudes. Um, but yes, yeah, going going back to the play-in scenario, the or this week's round scenario, um, Hawks and Perth going on right now. Um, looks like the Hawks are going to win. They're da- they're up three with eight seconds to go. Perth have the ball, so you're looking for Perth to sort of pull out of the fire here. They might no cotton. 
Um, I'd said here, Perth want to tank this game. Not really. You kind of, if you're Perth, you kind of like Sydney. Come and play in third. Well, let's play yeah. a two three against you guys. Um, I don't know if Perth really want to go up against the uh, Phoenix or the Hawks. You know, you don't reckon? No, What's your I thoughts on that? Look, Perth, it's yeah. They're, without Cotton, they're kind of you know a discount version of themselves. They don't really want to go up against anyone. But um, look, I think that Perth ultimately has to have the home series, and you know, they, they it, it prize will dictate how how well they're repped at home and how easy games are for them there. And, you know, I think that they're quite comfortable with Cotton on the floor playing either Illawarra, whose young core is probably a little bit too inexperienced to really go far this postseason. Mm. Um, I think, you know, obviously the postseason is very, very different to regular season games. Um, and I think that, I think the team that Perth don't really want to play is the Phoenix. Because the Phoenix can be... You know, they've got they've definitely got the on-court talent to take kind of Perth all the way. They just haven't really been able to put it together in stretches. And they've had injury woes as well. Um, but, yeah, I don't think they'd want to play Phoenix in the postseason. Melbourne just seemed very – everyone seems very beatable this year. Like anyone on their days can beat it, someone else. But in a three-game series with two two home games, is I think it's, it's a pretty tall ask for anyone to, to try and pull that off mm. uh, over in Perth. You know, maybe a fine game series with Melbourne and Perth. I, you know, Melbourne might be able to pull it off with, with the home advantage. But um, yeah, I, I'm very, very wary about going over east, or west. Or sorry. Mm. Um, they man, Perth had inbounds, eight seconds to go, tossed it to someone wide open under the basket, got a two, so now they're down one. Nearly inbound, trapped him in the corner, Jessup in the corner. It looked like a like didn't foul him, but they called it a foul. So now he's shooting free throws to go back up to uh, back up three, basically. Oh man, nuts! This game's nuts. Sorry, we got one eye on this other game because this changes everything pretty much. Um, if you know the Hawks win here, that changes our chances. Um, so Southeast Melbourne play the break, uh, the Bullets rather twice. They play the Breakers as well. Um, you would think the Southeast Melbourne team are going to beat the Breakers. I know it's at home. It's it's in New Zealand, so that might be a tall ask for a mm. three grand week to travel to New Zealand. Mm. And play the breakers in front of a packed home crowd because they've been getting sellouts. Um, I don't think it's as. Oh, he's missed the second. Perth don't have a timeout. They're coming up, and someone just. It was Mooney just ran up and shot a 36 footer, and Illawarra win. So that completely changes the the look of this uh, this last game week now. So essentially, we, we can't finish third, so we'll definitely be playing Melbourne if we can somehow burgle that fourth spot. Um, sorry to cut you off there. That's all good. It's important. Yeah, yeah. crazy just, stuff. What a what a ride this season has been, man. So it's the Hawks, coming to an end. It could be. It could come to a very um, very anticlimactic end this year. Yeah, week. they. It's you know, good. the Illawarra are at home uh, in this game against Perth. So this win. So basically, they pretty much secured finals football. Uh, finals football. Finals basketball. Um, playoffs basketball. So they essentially have to come up to. No, I think we go down there to play them, right? Too, yeah, there to play them. Oh, we got to win that game, man. We just got to win both games and hope, hope and pray. So, Southeast Melbourne play the Bullets. Essentially, you know, tough, tough week for them. You would be hoping for a little stumble from them. Maybe them lose against, uh, lose against the Bullets twice. Mm, very, yeah, very that's, interesting. That's, that's what you'd hope for. Mm. That's what you'd hope for. Whether that actually comes to fruition is, um, and then, story. and then if we. If we beat the Bullets, we can essentially finish. If we beat the Bullets and the Hawks, we finish 19 and 17. Uh, and then the Bullets, if they beat Southeast Melbourne twice, then both of those teams, uh, sorry, B- Brisbane would finish 18 and 17 with no chance of making the finals. And then Southeast Melbourne would have to beat New Zealand to basically tie it up with us and it would be on points percentage. What a, what a just a crazy, chaotic finish to the yeah. season. In a season where, you know, we have injury troubles, we have struggles. And if we just put away teams that we should have put away, uh, you know, we're sitting here in a position where we're just playing finals basketball and we're all comfortable. But it wasn't to be. It's been a bit of a struggle this season. So I, I wrote down here how many ga- how many games we've blown this season, um, <laughs> and it, it ended up. Oh, I'll read them out one by one. So we're zero and one against the Taipans in round one. Last minute shot from Casper blew that. Uh, zero and two against Brisbane at a reach. We missed some free throws and then Casper had a corner shot. 
I don't think we could have even won that game, but still, that's you know, I threw that in there just just for fun. Zero and two, zero and three against the Hawks, a game tying shot blown. Zero uh, and four, where in the cup, in uh, in he's hot, hot inside all game, and then he just throws up a brick with like eight seconds ago. Remember that one? Yep. Ah, oh, crazy. One of five against the types. Basically, a super generous. Um, no baskets in the last two minutes of that game, but we gutted that one out. So we'll give that one. We'll give that one. Um, honorable mention, Perth game, round 12. Um, in the last four minutes, 30. Perth went 13 of 14 at the line. It's just like... Yeah. <laughs> when you when you sort of say it out like that, you went, what? In the last four minutes, they went 13 of 14 at the line. And that was with only... All right, if you take four of those free throws away, it's still nine of 10, basically getting them home against us. It was just yeah. like, are you kidding me? Um, one of six against Perth in round 13. Jarrell missed a three with 11 seconds left. Two of seven round, uh, two out of seven round 14. Uh, kick it knocks down some clutch free throws. Let's count that. Uh, three out of seven clutch Craig comes through. That was the birth of clutch Craig with that three at the end. Uh, four of eight New Zealand. We, we sorry, at New Zealand, we clutched it out with some winning free throws. That was that crazy Corey Webster hits a three with like four seconds to go from like 36 feet. Just like, what the hell? Go away, Corey Webster. Um, and then this overtime win. So we finish this season probably five of nine in clutch situations. Not enough. No. Your thoughts? There was, yeah, there's been a few games where the plays have kind of, you know, we've, we've spoken about Adam Ford's final plays and relying on Casper Ware. And I think we've, we've seen some very inconsistent form from Casper in, in the, down the end of the stretch. And I, I did like in this Melbourne game, it seemed like Sean Bruce was, was the clutch man. Like that was like, nah, <laughs> Sean Bruce, you are the clutch man. You go for it. And we saw a lot of bricks, but we saw one very poignant three um, with um, deep into double OT. Um, it felt like it was going down, but for him. It, it felt like it was going down. Mm. That three just felt like it was going down. But it, it, Sean Bruce is one of those guys just like three and maybe a layup. Don't don't he, don't fiddle around. In he had that foul line jumper going, man. The last couple of games, like that, oh, I'm driving and then I'm pulling yeah. back and I'm shooting a foul line jumper. I was like... Where has this been, man? Like, why can't you get three or four of those a game? Like, you're knocking these down. What the hell? Anyway, keep going. Yeah, I mean, we we are, we're really lacking some super quality finishing. But again, this is this is the NBL, and you know, this is COVID year, and you know, Casper's back, and I I do think it was kind of just a uh, we have to hang out with you again, Casper. Yes, I I don't really have any other options. I'll hang out with you. <laughs> All right, cool. We'll try and get this done, and I think that was it. And you know, it's it's Casper's been in the league for a number of years now, and he saw his best days in Melbourne. He's had some brilliant games this season, but I think in true clutch moments, he struggled to find game winning winning form. And it's been other guys that have won the game. It's been Moller, it's been Kick it, it's been other guys that have had to step up in clutch situations, and actually. Shawnee B, you know, it's, 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 we just haven't heard Casper. Yep. Casper hits a three games, one Casper hits a two games tied. We just haven't heard that. Mm. And I think that that's what you kind of want out of your premium import. Um, and Jerome Martin's definitely not that Jerome Martin's had, had a good few weeks, but again, inconsistent with injuries can get, can't get some nights, can't get going. Um, but again, another guy, you just can't rely on in clutch minutes and it's just, it's tough because there's a, I think there's a few guys on other teams where you just th- this is going down. Like you know, Tyler Harvey has been one for the the Hawks. He's, he's you know he's had a few nights of chucking, but sometimes he's hot. Um, Bryce Cutton, um, Chris Golding. Although that was weird, they kind of benched him for most of the first yeah, overtime. Yeah, that? That was weird. That we'll was, talk about that. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, that was a bit strange. Um, so yeah, like five of nine. It's on paper seems okay, but I think in reality it's. It was about, yeah, it was not one and four to begin with. And still, we started moving away from Casper's dial up plays. Um, <laughs> yeah, basically, just get Casper as far away from that as possible. We're done. Done with the Casper. That's it. And Harvey, uh, what was he? Five of 12 from three tonight against Perth. Damn. It's Chuck City. Yeah. Um, so, my thoughts I, Casper's such a likable guy, man. And it feels like the elephant in the room is basically, um, shh, don't, don't talk any mess about Casper, man. Don't, don't, like you know, it just feels like that. Like you know, you want to say it's it's unacceptable. You want to say I don't like the this and I don't like the way you haven't been clutched this season. But at the same time, like I like the guy and I like I the like way him. he plays and I like him in general. He's a he's a good dude. One he's thing, like 
How come in every every interview he looks like he hasn't slept at all? Have you noticed that? He's these huge bags under his eyes? Every I'm like, have you got like, have you had newborns at, like all season and you haven't had any sleep? What's going on there? Yeah. Um, but he and then you know you, you can talk a little trash about him. You're like, hey, it's Casper. It's like the guy who pays for the accommodation and you know you're just like, yeah, yeah, no, he's our mate, like top notch. And then you all just go out and you leave him at the house and he's like, oh, where is everyone? You know, it's like that kind of situation. But I kind of am like. Let's let's, uh, let's move in a different direction, you know. And it's nothing. It's not. It's not Casper. It's us, you know. Yeah, I don't know. It's look. I think he's probably one of the best defensive five foot eleven dudes in the league, mm. uh, and probably one of the best defensive five foot eleven dudes I've seen play NBA, NB, NBL. Kind of the way he's able to, you know, pull the chair out under bigs. I don't. I, no, honestly, he pulled it. He did it. He did it again, actually. I'm pretty sure he did it. He's so good at that. I mean, that is his move. Like he, you know, I think in the in in in, you know, contrast the NBA, if you see like a six foot five guy on Kyrie Irving, you know that that's a bucket. He's absolutely woeful on defense, one of the Mm. best players in the world. And I think kudos to Casper is that he's able to defend dudes a lot bigger than him semi effectively. But one point in a big game against Perth for your marquee guy who can't get going. I mean, they were defending him quite well and it was kind of, but you got to find a way and he didn't. And, mm. you know, if we'd won that game against Perth, we probably would be, you know, sitting a lot nicer now. Mm. And that was a game to win. Yeah, for sure. Um, and we just couldn't do it. I mean, bad calls aside, we just looked like we were never in it anyway. Um, and oh, I think... Been- we yeah yeah because this ties in nicely to Casper's one point night with his, with his Wilt Chamberlain. <laughs> that was a good one. I like that one. Yeah. Um, I thought that was I thought that was winnable, man. Like Perth, every time Perth threw like haymakers at us, we came back and we just chipped away, chipped away, chipped away. And the way this team plays or has played this season, it's it played right into that wheelhouse of just like ah oh, this team just doesn't chip these games out and just go you know what we're throwing a haymaker right now bang we're knocking you out thanks we'll take this game because it's been all season it's kind of been that sort of that sort of way um I didn't even feel like Casper was going to get going in this game you know what I mean like and then they were just like Mitch Norton's all over him Mitch Norton's all over him it's like yeah there's, there's probably a few fouls there like you know. <laughs> That one where Geordie Hunter's just holding the ball, standing there, like doing like the Bogut sort of bum, bum bump. Yeah. And he just goes, like throws himself on the ground and they're just like, yep, that's a definitely an offensive foul. And the commentator's like, yeah, no, nah, you can't be doing that. And they just show the replay and he's just standing there and he just runs into him and falls over. And then no one goes, yeah, maybe we probably got that wrong. Like, <laughs> he's just yeah. like, geez. Um, and then it essentially just sort of says, says like, Casper can't shake this guy. And you're just like, you know, probably should get a little bit more love from the refs. I've got to admit this season, you're yeah, kind of watching him just. So doesn't, he doesn't get much love. Just at gets all. nothing, almost like nothing, absolutely nothing. Negative. Um, and again, it's not necessarily like we talked about in that video. Like it's not necessarily, oh, this, this moment, this moment, this moment, this moment, it all cancels each other out. It's kind of like just the, the flow of a game. You know, we, we, this season, there was points where, all right, you're playing too hard defense, you're getting punished for it, um, so we scale it back, and that's when a team comes back. And then, you know, instead of, you know, we, we build, up a, a build up a set of moments where we don't foul, we play good defense, and that spurs us on, and then suddenly the calls come, and then that's just enough for us to kind of, you know, lose a game. Basically, our biggest scoring one was se- run was seven, our biggest lead was five. And then that that basically that fourteen point run came, I think, around about the time we we're about five up, and then um, ended up leading by eighteen at one point. Um, I think the final was eighty one sixty seven. Yeah. But it just it's it's the momentum, man. It's, it's just so hard for us to go. You know what? We've got a cohesive scoring unit. We've got um, we've got a, we've got these guys on the floor that score the ball well. Like you mentioned, Jarrell. Sometimes he can't get can't get going. It's essentially because you put his offense into this team and you're just like, that breaks the mold of like pretty much everything we do. Like he doesn't really work with Casper, but Casper's like a sort of downhill score first guy, likes to shoot it. Um, and then the rest are kind of like Sean Bruce. Um, you know, he, he hasn't really dialed up the offense all that much. He's kind of basically playing this two guard, 
two guard position this season where you're just like, it just doesn't fit what he does. Like he's a, you know, facilitator. If you, if you didn't have Casper for whatever reason, for example, if he had got an injury and he had been the one that was injured all season, you might have gone, oh, you know, this might work if you're playing sort of, you know, one four pick and roll. Sean Bruce handling the ball the entire time with Jarrell. Um, you know, we struggled without Cooks. It was It's just been so obvious where just like Cooks comes back and you're just like, all right, he can guard pretty much two to two to five. Um, and then has this array of moves around the rim that basically starts pushing teams back. Yeah. And then Jarrell goes, oh, we pushed you back. I can get into this spot and shoot my fadeaways, get into my elbow. Um, you've been shooting the three ball quite well. He had three of six in this game against Perth. And it's like the rhythm of flow of offense. Like I don't necessarily think it's coaching. Um, I don't necessarily think it's bad players. I think it's just like the chemistry of the different players didn't really work this season. And I, I don't look at Ford and go, why didn't you make something of this, mate? Because I'm just like, it's, it's all just jutting out at all these weird angles with all these weird players. And Essentially, in a few games, we've had five power forwards on the freaking floor. <laughs> yeah. And Tommy V doesn't know whether he's like a center or whether he's playing like almost small forward and sometimes even a guard at some points. Like he's bringing the ball up and like initiating offense and like the dribble handoffs and stuff like that. Um, and then as much as Moller this season has really like blossomed into this, you know, I've gotten a chance to do a bunch of things and I've done them all quite well. There still isn't a niche there where you're like, Craig Muller does this. It's like rebounds is probably his niche, but then rebounds doesn't turn into, uh, oh, on offense, you really supplement this. Um, it's been the shooting that's kind of come good. And then the odd like drive into travel, like low percentage, I'm going to have to score over better guys. Where you go, okay, yeah, no, nah, I like the I like the nuts on you to try and do this. But at the same time, it's not like, Super sure he's been, offense. He's been hitting nice little fadeaways as well. Mm. Like you'd get into a spot and, and little turnaround fadeaways. I, I, look, for me, Moller is definitely the most improved player. I think he's a more improved player than Jordy Hunter because I think he fits this backup 3 4 role that we've really missed with Didi Lozada gone. Um, you know, obviously not the volume scorer or the volume defender, but I think in certain situations, he's definitely helped us down the stretch. Um, you know, Melbourne, that Melbourne game, that Illawarra game, that's, you know, that's a pretty big place for a dude that is t- typically, you know, a, you know, a second, third string, three, four. Uh, and his shooting has been good on, on low volumes as well. Um, but, it, you know, when you've got Jerome Martin, Xavier Cooks, Craig Moller, Tommy V, who are essentially all three fours, <laughs> it's just, you know, they're all on the floor, same floor at the same time. Just like, this is, I mean, Adam Ford. What, what what else can you do with that? Yeah, I know. You know you, sometimes you've got to play it. That's the way that the, the you know the the thing falls. Someone gets into foul trouble. Jordy gets into foul trouble. Right, Jarrell plays in five. Cooks plays. In five. Yeah, Cooks is still on obviously on fifteen minute restriction. Copped a little bit of knee bump. He played thirty minutes against Perth, but he copped a knee bump in that Melbourne game. But essentially, like what you said there is, those guys are on the floor, and you're not sitting there going, "What is this lineup? Like, what are you doing?" You're kind of sitting there going. Um, well, we kind of got to go with this lineup. Otherwise, Casper plays, you know, 40 minutes a night and, you know, Jarrell plays 40 minutes a night, which essentially they're basically playing between 32 and 40 a night anyway because these lineups descend into a mess. <laughs> like no fold of 40s at all. And then it's just, it's so hard to gauge. Like it's it's really hard to sit there and just go like not good enough um, with the amount of heart that everyone's shown. Like, like you're talking about Geordie Hunter, he had 14 points in this game against probably one of the, the best bigs in, or if not the best big in the league in Mooney. But still, there are moments where he just does really just like first year, like almost like, you know, under 17 development player type stuff. And you're just like, Jordy, like, wow. Like, really? You haven't sorted this out? How old is he? Like 23, 24? He's finished. 26. 26, four years of college to sort of come out the other side. And again, like he, he's been an improved player this year. And you still don't want to go. It's the same sort of Casper equation where you don't want to just start ragging on a guy. Like you almost get too attached to these players, and you don't want to be ruthless and just go. You're back to third string, man. You're back to third man off the bench. You're getting two minutes a night. Like this is unacceptable. Yeah. Um, but it's just you've just got to do it. I think he's useful in some spots. It's the same as kick it, but at the same time, I think he's a real kind of liability on defense, just with some of the bone, some of the bonehead stuff he does, and it just doesn't work with yeah. Jarrell. And Jarrell, you, you, he is just not a good defender at all. Like, there's yeah. so many turnstiles moments where you're just like, Jarrell, Jarrell, like, 
jeez, like whoa. And now you know why he's no longer in the NBA. Yeah, and as much as and uh, you know, you got always got to preface that with like offensively, he's just been a revelation for us this season. Like it's been a yeah. it's been an awesome awesome to watch as well as really useful offense and important offense for the team. Um, but yeah, defensively, whoosh. Anyway, um, so just quickly, we'll talk ref salt. Three three point fouls in this game. Yeah, and one of them was like, yeah, all right. Like if that was the one in the game, you go, yeah, all right, fair enough. And that was that bland, um, yeah, Blanchfield one where he jumped forward and then flopped. Yeah. And I, I hate those ones as well. Like where the the guy like the Harden styles, like they just end up like almost horizontal, just being like, I'm landing, I'm landing like five feet in front. Of, it's like no jump shooter yeah. lands five feet in front of themselves. Like stop that. Um, the other one basically where Stein will kicked his leg out and they showed it on the replay. He just puts his leg straight out into Newley and no no one picked it up. Like no one went, yeah, that's a kick out. Like, no, like it's an offensive foul. Like they all just like, yep, no, nope, great. That's great. Great play from Stein to shooting to like 30% this season. Let's send him to the line for three free throws. Um, we had three just garbage charges again. Like those just the garbage charges, man. Like, Moving, we had one where Wagstaff's like cringing, doing this with his arms sort of up like that, and they're still like, "Yep, Geordie, like you know, you didn't, you didn't even try in Euro or do anything. You just like tried to lay the ball in, and a guy fell over, and that's definitely an offensive foul." Just like, <laughs> can we not? Can we not do this? Oh, that's great defense, Ben. That's yeah, great oh, defense. fantastic Wagstaff. He's he's just, just a veteran, he, he you just know, veteran stuff. He just he just spazzed out and fell over. <laughs> it was fantastic. Just veteran, veteran staff from Jesse Wagstaff. I hate that. I hate the ones where like a guy, there was one where I think it was Bairstow, um, Moller, Moller caught the ball and turned around. No, it was Bruce. It was Bruce caught the ball, turned around, kind of gave it the like, why are you standing like right on me? Yeah. And it's like the leading arm one. Like it's not a, not a, not a throw, not a push. It was the leading arm. And he just threw himself on the ground. The ref's like, yep, oh, offensive cool. foul. And I was, was like. Was it? Nah, I'm pretty sure it was Besto or White maybe. It wasn't Norton. And then the almost identical foul, like identical. And then they're just like, nah. And then Shawnee Bruce is like, well, well, why was that different? Like you could hear it on the, the telecast. He's yeah, like, yeah. why were those two different? Like we did the exact same thing. I just didn't flop. And then he's like, nah, nah, that was, was not the same. And he's just watching it going, he just doesn't flop. And then he doesn't get the call. And I'm sick of seeing refs just being like, Oh, that guy ended up on the ground, so that's definitely a foul. And it's just like, if you keep rewarding this, they'll keep yeah. flopping. Like, yeah. if you keep blowing the whistle, guys will flop. Like, I want more guys to hit the ground and look up like, oh, why didn't you give me a call? And then the ref to just be like, like, get up. Like, what are you doing? Like, I hate that, man. I hate that it's just become like this. Oh, you know, this is, this is part of the game. Like, it's not part of the game. Like, the refs need to turn around and just go, flop warning. Like, get up. Like, we saw one the other night. It was another game. <laughs> Where And I was like, oh, my God, I've seen a flop warning for the first time in months. I've seen someone given a flop warning. And there should have been like 50 of them already since <laughs> since the start of the season. And I just, I'm sick of watching it, man. I'm like, I can't, I can't handle people that just run in and then just fall over. And then everyone's like, oh, man, awesome defense. Awesome. I'm sick of seeing that, man. And Perth do it heaps. Like, yeah, I hate to single them out. And it's, it's, it's definitely going to sound salty. And everyone can have a laugh and just be like, <laughs> salty. And I'll be like, yeah, I am. But I hate the one. They do that so much where they just run in and it's just like, oh, I fell over. And you're like, that's not defense, man. Like, stop. Stop with that. They notoriously do it around screens. Notorious Mm. around screens. Mm. That's it. And then notorious, like, awful screen setters too. We we saw it. Go watch our video on Bryce Cotton. Um, But, yeah, it was was a shame to tie it back into Cotton. It was a shame that we couldn't get one without him because I definitely think they're kind of vulnerable without Cotton. Yeah, from a scoring perspective, they are. But, um. Yeah, I think Mooney is 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 the the best big in the league. Like He's that. just I I I can't be upset at how good he is, man. I can't be salty at how good he is. He's just so good. Yeah, like there is. are a couple of players in this league where you're like, oh my god, I can't even be upset as a rival fan that that guy's so good. Like, and he's one of them, man. Like he is just. His fundamentals. Every time he just rises up, quick quick rises off a catch. He's just like that's going down. Like, damn it. Like, you didn't even have time to turn. I mean, it's Geordie, but you didn't even have time to turn and, like, get a hand up, and he's up there, and it's not even, like, a jump shoot. It's, like, raises all the way up and just, like, flicks it with his wrist. I'm just like, damn, man. That guy's so good. What a pickup. I went back and looked, and he was, uh, I think it was the August that they signed him, and it was like, oop, Bogut was still there, so we had no chance of signing him. Damn. 
Bogut um, destroying things again. Hey, Bogut destroying the season. Yeah, yeah. Hey, he became a part owner, so uh, let's not get too salty about. Hopefully, he'll play, spend some money. Welcome, uh, welcome, one of our new overlords. <laughs> uh, but no, it's yeah, no, it is what it is. Um, I will just quickly do a three-two-one for this game. Um, yeah, um, I'm gonna have to go back and get a few three-two-ones off you. I, I cleaned it up, cleaned it up tonight. Um, but I, like you know, at a later date, I'll give you the the list yeah. of three-two-ones to go back to. Uh-huh. When I was doing some solo stuff, when you uh, you were out with the bub, uh, yeah, Perth three two one. What do you got, Jarrell? Yeah, I'll go Jarrell defensively. Sometimes it's just it's awful. hard, man. It's hard. It is hard. Oh, yeah, I'll go Jarrell three. Um, I'll go Shawnee B two. Yep. Um, Hunter. No. Just going full box score. I'm not going box score. Was, I am. Jarrell, <laughs> uh, Shawnee B, and I'll go. Um, I'll give it to Craig. Why not? I'll go. Actually, Cooks. you know what I'll do? Cooks. Cooks. Oh, I'll go Craig then. It's every game, man. Craig just deserves one. Yeah. And sometimes good. he deserves two and three, but he he's been so good. Though. And again, like another likable dude. Like so many likable guys on this team where. You know, if you had to be ruthless, you probably could go, you're not fitting, mate. Like, you know, you probably could go a jettison for a scorer. Like, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to jettison him. Like, he's good on defense. He rebounds. You know, he plays tough. Just some moments he can't score the ball, and that's okay, you know. Um, that's okay if you've got, like, three guys on the team that can score the ball. But when you've got seven guys who are all on the <laughs> field at the same time, you can't and score the ball. And all bow forwards. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, so, okay, yeah, Martin, Hunter, Moller for me, and then Martin, Bruce, and Cooks for you. Let's switch to the Indigenous round, the Melbourne game at home at Kudos. I thought it was awesome watching the uh, pregame, seeing all that stuff on the pregame. I, I'm, uh, I'm very much in, in favor of um, it becoming a permanent fixture on the jerseys. Mm. For sure, yeah. I thought that was an awesome suggestion. They said that on the telecast. They were like, somebody suggested they should just put that on every jersey for the entire season. I was like, top notch, man, top notch. So cool. I think when we mainstream Indigenous culture, it becomes you mm. know part of everything. Then mm. I think it'll be more widely accepted, and it's a good idea. Uh, I think all the players like it. You know, we've got the best player in the world, in my mind, Paddy Mills, mm. Indigenous great Indigenous man. Um, doesn't, doesn't get enough credit. I don't think. I don't, nah, don't think he gets the credit he, he really deserves. Credit. He, he, he needs to be like he's i think he's probably i think he should be the flag bearer at the next olympics i think he's done his dues every the, olympics all the way every olympics until he can't <laughs> walk anymore he's going to play in the next four olympic games he'll be 50 playing in the nbl yeah he probably will be man he just keeps going and going and going ages ages but um yeah no this round was good it was a good spectacle um fun to watch the jersey was good and uh city played hard which was nice um it was I was I shared that video um, of them doing the the ceremonial stuff, like in the the talk and all of that. Like they've done a really good job this season. Like it just makes this team seem more likable and more together. And it fits into the wheelhouse of a bunch of guys who play basketball. And you you really like you feel really attuned to that and the team mentality and the team aspect. And that like a lot of this season, I've spent sitting there just going, you know what, this is not a very good team. But at the same time, like when I watch the team play, I watch the team spirit, I watch things like that video where, you know, like really absorbing the culture and you just like go, yes, I like, I really like, really like yeah. this team and it's a really likable team, even though it's not good enough. And uh, I've just got it up here, Craig Moller and the uh, Sonny's bunny, <laughs> Bunnings hat and Sonny's got both. It's like, Craig, come on, mate. Um, and again, like, this it just speaks to this team being such a likable group and a testament to kind of what they've produced this season and then it sort of flowed into what this game was which is like a never say die game against melbourne and then it's hard to kind of juxtapose that against these some of these other games where we've rolled over and you're just like oh boys if you had just won those games man like um it kind of is just like and they got it out to basically still be on the verge of being knocked out and you're just like <laughs> damn man like can't we just get something something good this season? Um, but it was it was a great performance. I think much less of a a oh individuals had really good games and more of just 
We set you up some moments in this game, guys. Like, Shawnee Bruce, have your moments here. Shoot those threes and knock them down, and you got some moments. And then Tommy V, have some moments here, knocking down some clutch threes to keep us in it or, get, you know, put us put us up six or whatever. And you, you took that moment. And I thought that was really refreshing to see. Yeah. It was it was a, a good game to watch. It was, you know, edge of your seat. Things happened. Um, team effort, for my mind. Um you know, I think that Adam Ford went with a different tactic in the overtime, which was, okay, Sean Bruce is, you know, Casper's going to run run off ball, and this is this is going to be Shawnee Bruce taking us down the down the stretch, and you know, I think that it played into Sydney a bit, and we had the ability to get guys into space better because you know there was that there were you know at certain times double teaming Casper, thinking oh you know Casper's going to get the ball, I'm just like no, he's not, mm. not giving the ball to Casper. Um, and you know, Bruce, he got two spots. He was unlucky, but in the end, you know, he had a couple of clutch threes. Um, Craig Muller with some excellent offensive rebounding, excellent defense. Um, yeah, it was seven offensive boards for Craig. Yeah, man, awesome. Yeah, he, from my mind, he's 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 definitely got my three this week. I think that without that, that does, you just don't win this game. Um, and that just shows you that sometimes jumping and and getting to right positions can um, can give teams uh, definite you know, boost down the stretch. It was really interesting because something we haven't really thrown out there is that if teams double trap, they were doing a lot of double trapping with Ely and McCarron. And it was like, okay, Shawnee, like you've got to create. Or um, in this game, basically it was like, oh, we'll toss it around and we'll create for Shawnee because the guy that's open. And there was a lot of that where you're just like, oh, like, wow, how haven't we seen that? Like, how is it 20 games or 30 games into this season? And we're just like, oh, if you toss it to someone else and they create a shot for Shawnee Bruce to knock down, um, you know, how, how good's that? Um, just quietly, David Anderson with four minutes, and it was just like, whoa, you are 40. Like, <laughs> whoa. We dodged a bullet on that one. Um, but I thought, yeah, another little wrinkle where, again, you go, yeah, great, great wrinkle. And then you just go, yeah, great wrinkle with like three games left in the season. And basically, we're, we're on the way out. Um, so that, but it was still good. Shawnee Bruce knocking down some clutch threes, and you had that feeling of it was it was five or fourteen, but you also had that feeling of, oh, he's set, he's going to knock it down, and he knocked it down. Yeah, sweet. And that's that's been very rare this season for him. It was definitely a lot of bricks, though. That's I think combined they went to what they almost took fifty shots for like 10, 10 scoring buckets. Where was this? Shawnee Bruce and Casper Ware combined. What was their combined uh, So Shawnee Bruce was 8 of 25 uh, and Casper Ware was 5 of 20. So what's that? 13 of 45. <laughs> <laughs> but still, it's still hilarious, but man, like just whatever. Keep shooting it. Keep shooting it. Shoot it. Um, and then Tommy V, like, like I wanted to preface it. I didn't, but I wanted to preface um, this whole conversation with basically – it was like this game was threatening to be there. Just blow it all up. Blow the whole thing up. You know, you know, Bruce gone. Kick it gone. Don't come back. Newly gone. Sure. Like, you know, Tommy V, don't get out of here. And then suddenly all these guys have this game where you're just like, oh, sweet. I love him again. That's great. You know, um, Tommy V especially because his three ball had basically deserted him over the last few games. Um, two or five and two clutch ones where the first one was just pure. Like, you know. It was just like, why, why are you leaving Tommy? That's his spot. And we went through pure. The second one was basically, it was a little, little hezzy dribble and just like, whoo. And you're just like, damn, Tommy V's knocking him down. Um, it was good to see. Going through the box score, Casper played 47 minutes. Yeah, damn. Um, 16 points. Fit. Huh? Dude is fit. I know, man. He, that. He's a beast. Five, five assists, uh, five of 20 on the night, one of eight from three. So the, the woes continue. That, that one point game, man. One free throw, <laughs> that poor dude, and over eleven from three. So what is he? One of one of nineteen in his last nineteen shots. Damn. Uh, but five or six from the line, that was good to see. What else have we got? Jerome Martin, five of twelve. He had twelve points. Shawnee Bruce, obviously eight of twenty-five. So five of thirteen. But that five of fourteen, if you just swipe away that three of eleven, I think you need a yeah. couple of really good foul line jumpers that were important. Um, basically to keep us in it. I think at one point he hit one where it was like we were down and then he, he kept us in it with one of those foul line jumpers. Um, so you can wipe them away. Um, Jordy Hunter had nine points, uh, three of seven. Going through the bench, Newly had eight points, uh, four of five from two. So a little bit of uh, getting to the hoop 
And you're like, yes, keep doing it, Brad. Keep doing it. Uh, Craig Moller, eight points, three of 10. He had 11 boards, seven offensive rebounds, four defensive, five assists as well to go with that. That was good as well. Three steals. The amount of steals. We had 11 steals in this game. That's crazy. 11 steals. Uh, Craig Moller had three. Tommy had one. Newley had one. And then Ware, Martin, Cooks all had one. And then Shorty B had two. And Bru- and Hunter had one. So very, very... um. Very, very active with the hands. Jarrell Martin fouled out of this game too. Yep. On an offensive foul. Like, <laughs> on an uh, – can we, can we just make it a rule? Like, if you have four fouls and you're going to the hole, you cannot give away an offensive – or you just don't get fouled out. You have five, but you don't get fouled out. I yeah. hate that, man. We've seen that at least three or four times this season where it's just like – you know, he's on four fouls, he's still in the game, and he goes through and there's a burgled charge, and now, now that guy's just it. I think we had one where Hunter, he dunked on someone. And I was like, you're dunking on someone? No, you fouled him. I was like, but he dunked it. Like, what? How is that a foul? <laughs> um, yeah, so that was, it was good to see us basically go guard heavy in the, uh, in the absence of Drew Martin and win a game, you know what I mean, without DJ because, you know, a lot of the guard-heavy stuff has been revolving around DJ and Diddy this season, but they're not there, obviously, so. Yes, it's a, it's a very different team. Um, do we need to talk anything else about this this game? Um, if one, one of the things, too, like I, I texted you, like, they're like, oh, you know, Shorty Bruce, 21 points. And I was like, it doesn't feel like, tw- like it feels like he, that was like a 35, 40-point game, eh? That felt yeah, like yeah. An, a monster immense game, and they were like eight of twenty-five. I was like, "That's a that's terrible! Like what? <laughs> that's an all that's an awful efficiency." But whatever, man. Twenty-one points, and then I was thinking, "Oh man, Landale had an absolute stinker in this game. Like it was terrible." And they're like twenty-three points, nine of nineteen. I was like, "What? Like he had more than Sean Bruce? Like I didn't even feel like he had a good game." He didn't. No, a lot of the, a lot of Melbourne didn't. Oh, Mitchell Carrot had had, a, had an all right all right game, but mm. um, yeah, it was. He had he had ten rebounds, nine assists, so he was at one point and one assist shy of a triple double. It's crazy. He, he's good, but man, that that little one dribble, Chris Paul style to the nail, and just or to the like back to the elbow and hitting the uh, hitting that jumper. You're just like, God damn it, man! Why aren't we? Why isn't Shawnee Bruce shooting that, man? Um, and then Chris Golding, sixteen points. Yeah, talk about that bizarre. Like, why didn't he come in in the first overtime? Yeah, I don't, weird. don't understand that. <laughs> We're sitting him, we're sitting him, we're sitting him. You're about to lose the game, but man, all right, bring him out, bring him out. <laughs> like a minute to go. It's weird. It was, and then they went to Hobson in the, in the second OT and he was just like, brick, brick, brick. Oh, he's out. Sweet. Oh, that's, that's the, uh, he doesn't fit that team at all, man. But, no. you know, he has had some stretches where he's been important. Uh, credit to him, a minus 18 on the night. And then everyone's favorite dirty player just cannot stop shooting threes against us. Uh, he had a minus 20 in Shea Ely, and I was like, excellent. It was good to see a night where it's basically, oh, you're really aggressive doubles. Somebody else actually scored off of your man for a change. Sweet. How do you, how do you like that? Uh, looking quickly at some more of the stats because I want to see what these shooting stats were as a team. Uh, they're coming up. thirty. We shot 37% from the field, 47 from two and 23% from three. <laughs> Imagine losing, losing a game with the team shooting 23% from three and then 89% from the line. Uh, Melbourne, 45% from the field. Fifty. Imagine shooting 45% from the field, 55% from inside, 31% from three and still losing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then they are on the top of the table. So, you know, what, what can you do? Uh, let's do a 3 two, one. Uh, You went with Moller for three. I did. Johnny Bruce for two. And... Uh... The, the Newells for one. Newells. Back getting to the hoop. There was one in transition where like, it was like a hesitation and then he just reached in and laid it in. I was like, yes, that's yeah. peak Newley, peak Newley. It's a shame we won't see that in the uh, playoffs. Uh, what was I going to go? I can't remember what I was going to go. I kind of wanted to give it to Cooks. Yeah. I think I'm going to go Moller. Wait, I already went Moller for two, right. I'll offer two. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, all right. I like your newly pick. Let's let's shout some newly points in there. Shove some newly points in there. And let's go now to tips. What a week. 
I did tip Hawks. I did. I did yeah, comment. you just burgle a little Hawks action there. Um, that's my go-to word at the moment. Uh, as you, as we were, we will talk about the uh, coaching situation after this. All right, New Zealand is the next game at home to Cairns. Uh, I'm gonna go New Zealand. Yeah, I went with the Breakers also. Southeast Melbourne at home to the Bullets. I'm gonna tip the Bullets because I just I have to. <laughs> yeah, it has to be man. Uh, Illawarra is at home to the Kings. Kings. Oh, also do it. Kings. We've got to do it. Perth at home to United. This is a big game. This is basically for the, the one spot. Yeah, I'm going to go United. UTD. I will also go UTD. Uh, New Zealand then at home to Southeast Melbourne. Southeast Melbourne. Yeah, I think they're going to win that. Um, I'd like them not to. That would be great. So anyone anyone out there who can make that happen, make that happen. Uh, Kings at home to the Bullets. Kings. To it's end our season with a home game against the Bullets, basically, hopefully, if we can keep our keep our season alive with that. United at home to Adelaide. United. United. And then Bullets at home to Southeast Melbourne to finish. It's going to be an absolute blockbuster if the, the uh, season's still on the line. Southeast Melbourne. Seven. Although it doesn't really matter. I'll, I'll go the Bullets just because I'm you know, trying to will them to win yeah. the victory. The magic, the magic and power of the universe. Yeah, I went with the bullets. Just hope, hope we can get them, get them over the line, and that rounds out the final round of tipping the final week. Uh, so yeah, it's an absolute blockbuster, blockbuster finish, possibly ton up. Hopefully, somebody. Um, but yeah, wow, crazy stuff. Let's let's talk quickly about a new coach. Because I noted, I was saying to you in the green room, somebody sort of said, uh, Mike Kelly leaving. I was talking about this at the start. Mike Kelly leaving the Cairns Taipans, you know, burgling that coach of the year off of Will Weaver last year, mm-hmm. where Will Weaver just clearly should have won that. Yes. <laughs> and then, he, you know, he burgles that and then next season finishes last and, you know, isn't coming back. What are your thoughts on a possible, let's pick up Mike Kelly? I think we've got to we've got to figure out our team first before we figure out our coach. Um, Is it yeah, yeah. six and one half a dozen? Of no, I think it's 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 recruiting the right players. I mean, you could recruit the right coach first, but I think the players are, you know, there's got to be a different balance of players come next year. I think there's a good core there, and I think you know we're waiting on DJ to get healthy. Um, you know, Bruce Cooks, um, DJ. Um, <laughs> Do we bring Newley back for, you know, his another season? I think Kickett's probably, you know, retirement material. We really need to get a third string big. I mean, we, we need need to go in the big in the big department. Yeah, I, look, I don't see a lot of this team returning next year. Molo, sorry, would be a part of it. Um, yeah, I think there needs to be a bit of a soul searching on what this basketball team's actually going to make up, whether that's bringing Mike Kelly or bringing in another coach. To kind of start that, you know, it'll be interesting to see who they who they hire. Um, but yeah, isn't forty potentially going up to Cairns on a long term contract? Yeah, that was the rumor. I mean, I was saying, I was talking about it. Like, this does. Do you feel like that's going to happen? Like, it seems a bit like, all right, after leaving, and you know, like, oh, a family man. I'm a family man. I miss my family. It's just like, it seems a bit weird. Yeah, but I don't think they were going to give him another a long term contract at Sydney. So uh, fair say. enough. And that was yeah, that was somebody's retort was basically that you know if they well, they weren't going to lock him in on a full time deal, then you know it's all about family, et cetera, et cetera, and that's one way to explain it. But at the same time, like it still is kind of like a bit of cloak and dagger type stuff where you're just like, is does this team really need that sort of bull ish? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. It's just, really? yeah, kind of weird. Like, really, that whole him leaving, it came at such a bad time. Like, why announce that, you know, in the in the heat of a season? Basically, like, come on, boys, like, win it for me. Like, Gazy styles. Like, I just had that same flashback of them, Gazy doing it in the finals. And then it just being, like, this team going, uh, well, that team at the time under Gaze, just being like, we're not playing on this guy. <laughs> like, yeah. we're sending you out as a loser, mate. Like, see you later. Like, not necessarily that's what happened, but it kind of that kind of sounded like kind of felt like that's what happened. But I felt like 
40 leaving it just had a sort of weird weird timing so maybe that's something to buy into like him going to another franchise that isn't sort of perth like i i saw it as time for him to kind of go home like he you know maybe in three or four years he can take the reins over gleason or maybe if gleason goes somewhere else or gets like an australia gig somewhere or something like that um or you know i just thought it was a bit strange but mike kelly i think would be quite high on the list he's, he's he did wonders with that cans team the first season um the style of basketball is good x's, x's and o's coach a good um good organizer you know that cans team isn't a mess the cans team just kind of has has its own issues scoring scoring the ball and playing defense which is i guess a huge huge uh huge yeah, thing about coaching ego, but. ego team then you know i think there was yeah mm. but i think if you're bringing in a new coach it's probably the right time to just torch what we've got just go right yeah. kick it out of here um you know you're left with what are the development players are you know, enough of these like Kernish Drew, Weeksy's type signings, um, you know, you probably jumble the pack and go, you know, Brucey, Martin, Hunter, Cooks, Moller, and then you make a bit of a decision on Vodanovic and Yuli that, you know, the, the, essentially like it boils down to like you can't have these development players being like, oh, no, one injury and we're suddenly into the development players. You no. know what I mean? That that came very quickly at the start of the season, where it was like, well, "Hang on, like, why is Woodhill and you know Woodhill and um, who was the other guy Galloway coming off the bench like in game three after we've got one injury? Like that doesn't make sense." Yeah. Um, well, I guess it was two because Kicker was out as well. Um, but I think like it needs like it needs nuking, man. Like it needs the new nu- like the nucleus needs to change. Like it's all all glue and not enough materials. You know? Correct, agreed. There needs to be two um, better marquee signings. Mm. I kind of like Martin though. It's really hard to kind of go past him, having him as th- part of this team. But if you're gonna have him, like get get a shop blocker, pay a, an important shop blocker, yeah, and someone exactly who can play around the rim. Yeah. If you're gonna generate Martin as the focal point for your kind of offense and have Shawnee Bruce running things and DJ at the two spot, then yes. You need to have an elite, you know, center, mm. <laughs> an elite stretch center, really. Yeah, ah, but I'm sure we're going to do a lot more soul searching over the next uh, couple of weeks. I think, depending on how our fortunes go in the playoffs, we'll be talking whether we're playing in the playoffs or like talking about this team going forward into next season. So hopefully, this week we can uh, overcome, we can beat the Hawks, and we can beat the Bullets put it in the gods' hands and get into this playoffs scenario. We'll definitely be playing against Melbourne if we do make it. And I, I kind of like that. I, I don't like, um, you know, Melbourne are going to come out like just with a huge swinging punch, just being like, we want to annihilate you after we, you humiliated us last season. <laughs> and we did humiliate them. Um, but at the same time, we can just burgle one. Ooh, ooh, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Make the <laughs> Just randomly make the finals. What a finish to the season that'd be. Um, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, we're going to leave it there for tonight. We're going to let this week play out. We're going to be back again next week to discuss the final game week or game round of the season. Uh, yeah, and as always, like and subscribe. We're on Facebook Live right now. You can come and watch us live. You can watch us back in replay on YouTube and also in audio form on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, on the Anchor platform that goes out to Spotify. Definitely give us a rating and review to get us out to more Kings fans who want to listen to us talk about the Kings. Uh, And as always, we will see you guys next time on the Kings Dive.